Hi there. You're listening to the Trading Through Coronavirus podcast from Business West with me, Nigel Barker. Now, the old saying, a week is a long time in politics. Hang on, scrub that. 12 hours is a long time in politics, it seems nowadays. We here at Business West have been working on a story about the issues that you as a business have been facing um, since this, this crisis started. And one of those big issues has been actually accessing the funds that the Chancellor announced two weeks ago. And then all of a sudden, at 10.30 last night, Rishi Sunak took to the podium and announced some of the changes that we've been lobbying for on your behalf. So your voices are being heard, which is good. Later on, we're going to be hearing from James Jury, the Chief Executive of the Chambers of Commerce in Bristol, about these changes that have been made, but also what still needs to be done. But first, let's get a bit of the background story. So two weeks ago, Rishi Sunak announced something called the Coronavirus Business Interruption Loan Scheme. Catchy title. Let's just call it Sybils. This is aimed at giving businesses vital cash during the crisis, but still businesses are struggling to access this money. I spoke to one such business owner, James Garnham, who runs a small but growing hospitality business in the Southwest. And I started by asking him what effects coronavirus has had on his business. Probably as it started getting serious around sort of middle, middle of March before the, the shutdown, there was a, a very noticeable slowing down, particularly lunch times, because um, most of my trade is um, sort of retired people, basically. So obviously they, even before the government shutdown came out, they, they were very noticeably going out less. Um, <clears throat> then when the government announced they wanted to stop us or at least advise people to stop going to pubs but didn't shut us down, that was a really, really stressful week. Again, my lunchtime trade just ended up being non-existent completely. Some of the evenings were okay, but obviously that was ridiculously stressful. And then um, when they did the the initials, everyone's got a shut apart from takeaway, we made the decision to carry on doing takeaway. Obviously, we lost Mothering Sunday. and lost a huge amount of food. I mean, we managed to freeze down most of the meat, but we'd already ordered all the veg before they announced we had to close, so there's quite a big loss there. Um, And then when they announced the increased, sort of basically the full lockdown, we just made the decision then that it was more cost-effective to shut and put everyone on furlough rather than trying to struggle through and support the few salaries that we needed to sort of carry on. How did you feel when uh, the Chancellor announced the, uh, the... Um, business uh, interruption loan scheme. Did you feel that might benefit your business? I, I did. Yes, I was. I was really the the package of measures they put together on whatever Friday that was. Was it the that the twentieth or was it the thirteenth? Whichever Friday that was. Like that was a huge relief. I spent all of that week thinking that was it. We were done, and the business was going to go under. And that gave me the confidence. Actually, we we probably would make it through. How easy have you found it to access that money, though? Um, Practically impossible at the moment. Um, I've been on hold to Barclays for over an hour without getting a response. I've left a message asking them to phone back and the recorded message says 24, 48 hours. Um, That was nearly a week ago um, and there's still sort of no reply on their helpline at the moment. And online is just says basically phone us. The Chancellor is saying one thing and for whatever reason it's not that's not what the, what's happening actually on the ground. The government's saying, yes, we'll do this, yes, we'll do that. And for whatever reason, the banks just aren't. It's not getting through to the banks. They're not giving the support that the government is promising. Now, I'm not a financial expert by any stretch of the imagination. So I thought I'd speak to somebody that actually knew about this stuff. So I caught up with Jim Shaw from Shaw & Co. and asked him, first of all, what the civil scheme actually is. Um, so the uh, Coronavirus Business Interruption Loan Scheme, or as we call it, C-Bills, uh, first announced on the 11th of March uh, by the Chancellor in his, in his budget. Um, and it's really a scheme designed to help uh, small and medium-sized enterprises with uh, cash flow problems during the economic uh, disruption caused by the, uh, the, the precautions that the country has had to take with social distancing and the lockdown of certain uh, parts of the economy. Um, It's built on the old enterprise finance guarantee scheme, which some people might be familiar with. Um, And of course, uh, when looking to introduce something at a pace, you're looking for something one can modify is always a a, a tempting thing to do. And that's what's happened. Um, And now uh, the scheme's been announced and uh, we're actually starting to work through and understand some of the issues with that. So we're expecting 
uh, modification in the in the near future. But broadly speaking, uh, the scheme uh, offers loans of up to five million pounds to small and medium sized enterprises, and that's defined with turnover of under forty five million. Um, those loans are limited uh, to other tests that Br the British Business Bank applies, including um, can't be any more than a quarter of your turnover um, or two and a half times your uh, payroll, or indeed you just if, if those two are exceeded, you need to prove that it's needed for liquidity over the next 12 or 18 months, depending on the, on the, on the scale of your business. It's being administered through... Uh, the British Business Bank are providing the guarantee, and there's an 80% guarantee coming from the government. Um, the lenders are providing the capital and then relying on the guarantee from the government. And of course, that leaves the lender exposed for 20% of the loan. Uh, the loans are also uh, particularly over £250,000. They, uh, they need to be secured. So this is not grant money from the government. These are these are very much loans in which the government and the lenders are expecting their money back. There's been a lot of stories in the in the media over the last couple of days about businesses applying to their banks as they've been told to about uh, the C bills and and you know almost being offered banking products versus the C bills products. Some businesses are saying they've been uh, you know quoted 22 and 30 percent interest. Other businesses are saying they're having to put their house on the line just for this. What advice would, would you give those businesses that, that have experienced that? Okay. Well, first of all, it's, it's important just to be clear as to why that's happening. And that's actually because the rules of the C-Bill scheme require that the lender offers all forms of commercial loans before falling back onto the C-Bills arrangement. So this is not about banks profiteering or banks trying to force businesses into high cost loans. It's banks doing as they're told. And unfortunately, they're getting the brunt of the media backlash for, for, for doing that. So our communications to the Treasury are very much about changing those rules to try and make C-bills the first line of defence, not the last line of defence. For people who have been offered those kind of loans, um, then um, I think that they need to uh, take a little bit of a step back see what develops over the next week or so because the the sands are shifting i think it's about uh not panicking uh about making sure you preserve cash where you can in your business at the moment to give you give yourself some runway um, talking to your suppliers talking to your staff everybody's in the same boat and everybody wants it uh, businesses to survive here so you just need to buy yourself a little bit of time as this sorts itself out and I'm sure that it will because I think that um, you know, the Treasury is aware that um, the scheme that they've put together here does force businesses and lenders down a certain path which isn't exactly appropriate given the uh, given the circumstances. So that was yesterday and then at 10 30 last night Rishi Sunak basically gave a revised statement in a press conference uh, basically outlining a revision to the Sybil's plan. To put it in a nutshell, uh, lenders are now banned from requesting uh, personal guarantees for loans of up to £250,000, which effectively means if you're a director of a small company looking for under £250,000, you don't have to put your house up on the line for it, which is good news. It's also going to extend the scheme to cover very small companies uh, that are unable to secure commercial funding. So creating a bit of a safety net there as well. And there's also going to be a new scheme that's going to uh, basically give support to larger firms looking to uh, get loans of up to £25 million. So you've got to have a turnover of between £45 million and £500 million, uh, for that to apply to you. So there have been some good changes. I'm joined down the line now by James Drury, the Chief Executive of the Chambers of Commerce in Bristol. James, what is your reaction to the Chancellor's statement overnight? Well, speaking really on behalf of all, all of the businesses across the whole of the Southwest, not just in Bristol, and there are, there are some 200,000 businesses there, uh, we do welcome very much that the Chancellor has announced um, some new messages to extend what we were identifying and businesses were telling us as a serious gap within the business interruption loan scheme so that actually uh, uh, there are now some measures that's come into place which, which will help businesses. But there is a real sense of urgency here that actually we do need to get this money delivered to businesses now on terms that they can afford uh, and we, we need that real delivery from the Chancellor and the banks. So um, with, with regards to that announcement, uh, obviously we've been pushing for quite a lot of, of, of this change. Um, 
do you think the chancellor is going to continue to listen to uh, our voice and the voice of business moving forward on this? Well, I, I really, uh, I do think that the chancellor has been listening and has moved moved quickly. But what we don't know is whether his lifeboat and the announcement we've seen, uh, really stemming back from two weeks ago, and there have been changes almost on a daily basis since then. What we do don't know is it have they and are they going fast enough? We are having reports through. Um, uh, of businesses that are really considering hard the contemplation about closing down their business now. They can't get access to uh, potential grants, but also particularly to these loans, there's a real concern that they are just running out of cash now and they will have to make arrangements now to, to, to start to close down. There's a, so, so there's a real serious concern from businesses, as I say, right across the Southwest that uh, if they can't get the loans and they can't get on the terms that they can afford, uh, they're going to have to make uh, some really, really difficult decisions that they really don't want to have to make. So we, um, uh, as a business community and a business organisation, Business West, particularly through our training through coronavirus uh, um, uh, task force and platform, we're making that case nationally. Uh, we want to hear from businesses uh, uh, on an ongoing basis what, what they think around that. But there are two issues really still around, uh, really a basic issue about banks uh, being able to, uh, for, for customers be able to talk to their banks, be able to get through to them online, on the phone. We've heard hearing stories about call centres which are down. That is a serious issue of people. Maybe they could, they, 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 in theory, they could access the loan, but if they can't get hold of their bank, they can't access these loans. And secondly, the terms upon which the banks are offering those loans, the interest rate, uh, is not something that the Chancellor has intervened on. That's something that we will be talking to the Chancellor around uh, through the British Chambers of Commerce because that is a serious issue. If they're on terms that businesses can't afford, they won't take the loans and the alternative may be that they shut down that business. James, what advice would you have for any business that's naturally concerned at this time? Um, what, what can we offer them to, to help? So we are putting out a big call for case studies, uh, uh, examples about where businesses are at that critical issue where they're having concerns related to finance, but also maybe around people, around some of the furlough arrangements. It may be restrictions uh, in it, basically who people aren't eligible for some of the, the, uh, the measures that government are, uh, have, have um, announced. So for instance, limited companies, there are some restrictions on some of the self-employed people who haven't been trading for very long. We want to hear these case studies. So we're putting out a, case, a call for case studies uh, right across the whole Southwest. Please feed these back through www.tradingthroughcoronavirus.co.uk. We have a team uh, which is, uh, we've now been scaling up, we'll continue to scale up to answer your queries, but to, to take your case study and to use that to talk to the Chancellor through British Chambers of Commerce. So we need to hear from you. We need to hear from you now. It's easy to do it. Please just get come, go on to our website. Thanks for that, James. So is that the end of this story? No, we don't think so. We think that this story will continue until that money actually starts flowing to businesses like you yours at a rate that you can actually afford the banks have still got some work to do okay we know that they are not managing the calls that they are they are experiencing we know that their systems aren't actually necessarily that accessible for you people have been saying the website says phone this number you phone this number you get stuck on hold for us that's not actually going to help you very much. It will only help when that money starts flying to you. So the banks need to improve that. We are going to continue to lobby banks and the chancellor and government on your behalf to actually help this happen. Rishi Sunak's done a great job. He's announced some good measures. I, I'm, I'm personally thinking they're, they're very good measures, but it needs to happen now. And that's actually where you come in. Okay. It is your story. It's not our story. And we want you to help us to lobby by telling us your story. Get in touch with us, with us through the website, tradingthroughcoronavirus.co.uk. There's a hashtag, hashtag tradingthroughcoronavirus. All the information is on that website. You can email us and get in touch with us, whichever means you want. You can tweet us if you want to. Just tell us what is going on with your business now and what problems you are having because we these real life case studies make a massive difference when we're trying to actually sort of um, fight your corner. So please do get in touch. Now, it is Friday today. It's nearly the weekend. I hope everyone has a great weekend. Um, hopefully today I will also be able to get out a good news story for you. I've, I've got it there. I just need to be able to get this out to you today. So hopefully we'll finish on a high. But take care of yourselves. Stay safe. And um, see you next week.